Okay, folks, in this next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about descriptive statistics. So what descriptive statistics really is all about is a way to summarize our data or to describe our data with one numerical value, okay? So the common way that you all learn in probably middle school as well as in high school is that we use descriptive statistics in a type of descriptive statistic that is known as central tendency. So central tendency represents the mean or the average value, the median or the middle value, and the mode, which is the value that occurs most often, okay? So when we're talking about the mean, the way in which we calculate the mean or the average is by using Greek notation, but really I don't want you to get confused by looking at the Greek notation. You know how to calculate the average already. You sum, so anytime you see this word sigma, you sum or add up all of the X values, so you add up everything, and you divide it by the total number of possible values in the unit. So whenever you see this sigma, this means sum or add everything together, right? Whenever you see X, this means the value of a dependent variable, and so X bar represents the average of all of the X values. The population mean, so remember, we are taking sample statistics, but if we wanted to get them back to population parameters, we would need to use um, Greek notation and average of the population, which is expressed as something called mu. And N represents the sample, lowercase, and the population's sample is represented with capital letters. So to make sure that we understand the formulas that we may be looking at this term, anything that is a population parameter will be represented in Greek notation or capital letters. Anything that is a sample statistic will be represented in alphanumeric characters in lowercase. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. But central tendency in our ability to calculate the mean or the average value is simple. All we have to do is add up all the numbers in the data set and divide it by the total number of values. And that will represent the typical or average value of the sample in that data set. When it comes to the median in the mode, we're talking about the middle value of the data set when we arrange the data from smallest to largest. Okay, so in this particular case, we have a series of data at the top here and we organize them from smallest to largest and we can quickly determine the middle value. The middle value would be calculated when you have a data set. In this case, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers, right? So if I did four from the left and four from the right, this extra value in the middle would represent the middle number. So in this case, the middle value or the median would be nine in that particular case, okay? So one of the things that you'll see in this class is that, remember, distributions, the normal distribution, right, in a population, the mean, the median, and the mode are all equal to zero, right? And then we can go one, two, or three standard deviations above the mean, or we can go one, two, or three standard deviations below the mean. But what happens if I have more than one mode? More than one mode would mean that the number that occurs with the greatest frequency happens more than one time. So in this particular case, right, we only have one mode here, right? Because one, two, five, seven, you have three nines. So the mode, the number that occurs most often would be nine, but graphically, it's completely possible to have a unimodal distribution where there's one mode that occurs the most frequently. There's something called a bimodal distribution where if you have two numbers in a data set that have a tie effectively in the highest frequency, we would call that a bimodal distribution. Or if there was two or more uh, modes with the highest frequency, we would call that a multimodal distribution. So simple enough, right? I mean, mean, medians, and modes are things that you all knew how to do before coming into this course. But I think what's helpful to take it to the next step in health sciences statistics is what are the advantages and the disadvantages of using the mean, the median, and the mode? 
And, you know, the mean is definitely the number that I think most of you are most familiar with and would relatively think that it's pretty straightforward to calculate. And we use the mean a lot in this course, right? It's the most common thing that we do use. But sometimes, depending upon the basic assumptions of a statistical procedure, the median may be a good alternative that best represents the description of your data, uh, particularly if you have outliers in your data or if uh, you have a very small sample size and you have extreme values above and below the mean, uh, the median sometimes is a nice way to sort of hedge your bets and to make sure that things are relatively stable. And it could be a better representation of the data itself. The mode, um, has its advantages when you have nominal data, right? So if we're using, let's say a non-parametric procedure, or if we're looking at data that is categorical in nature, and so the dependent variable of interest is not, uh, a D is not continuous, meaning it's not interval or ratio level of measurement, then using the mode for categories as the dependent variable makes a lot of sense okay so i wanted to make sure that you understood that because understanding that while the mean is the most common way in which we measure data it is not the only way that we use data and we shouldn't treat the mean as the only way in the default way of doing things because data in research is very complex some people have very high values some people have very low values and sometimes the best way to describe your data is the mode or is the median. Um, but I guess the rule that I would say is the mean is still the best approach most of the time. Um, but in other situations, particularly when basic assumptions are violated or we have extreme values or outliers, the median and the mode make better sense in those situations. Okay. So let's talk a little bit now about what's known as the populations mean or what we call the mu in Greek notation. So the capital N represents the total number of people in the population and the mu is the average or the X bar for the population. And so you see some distinctive differences here, right? So X bar represents a sample statistic and it is denoted with a lowercase n, right? So the sum of all the values divided by the total number of values. This is what we use in a sample. At the population level, remember we use Greek notation. So the X bar, alphanumeric, is replaced with the Greek notation mu. The same exact formula occurs, but now because we're talking about a population parameter, the N is capitalized. So just make sure you understand that, but otherwise the entire formula and how we calculate the mean is exactly the same. It's just about whether or not we're wearing the sample statistic hat or the population parameter hat. So I hope this video is helpful. In the last video, we're going to talk a little bit about dispersion.